Alright, we are back to shooting the monster, but in this video, the monster will shoot back at us to make the game a little fair and a little more challenging. So we'll focus most of our efforts around the monster bullet and the monster bomb sprites. Now, as was the case with the player-generated bullets, the monster-generated bullets will hide and will generate clones starting from the monster in the direction of the player. So from the monster bullet, click on that sprite and I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to make sure that the costume of the monster bullet is bullet and I'm also going to make sure that the position on the screen is the dead center of the screen so I'm going to bring in go to x equals 0 and y equals 0 nice now we need to program how and when these bullets are going to get started from the monster towards the player. So this original sprite is going to create, as usual, it's going to create clones. So when the sprite receives the, for example, the level one message, it's going to get generating clones forever. So I'm going to bring in a forever loop. And uh, let's say that every second the monster will keep creating clones. So I'm going to wait one second and create a clone of myself. All right, now let's program the clones. What happens to a clone? Well, when I start as a clone, first of all, I need to be visible on the screen. So I'm going to show, and I'm also going to display on top of every other sprite. So I'm going to go to front layer. Now we need to make this clone point in the direction where the player is, but fortunately we already have that in the form of the variable player direction. All right, so I'm going to pick point and direction and inside I'm going to fit in player direction. And now I need it to start marching towards the player. So I'm going to bring a forever loop. Now, if it's touching the player, I'm going to tell the player sprite to be hit. So I'm going to broadcast a message. If it touches the edge, I'm just going to delete this clone. So let me start with the second if condition. If the bullet is touching the edge, I'm going to delete this clone. So I'm going to go to the light blue sensing section and I'm going to bring in the touching diamond shape lock and I'm going to select edge. So if touching edge, I'm going to go to control and I'm going to delete this clone. Now I'm going to duplicate this block and I'm going to put it in the first if block as well. So if touching the player, then I'm going to broadcast a message to tell the other sprites that the player has been hit. So I'm going to go to events and I'm going to broadcast a new message and I'm going to name this player hit and then I'm going to simulate that explosion effect. Now let me simulate that exploding effect aside in the open space. So the way that I'm going to do that is I'm going to cycle between the explosion costumes. So explode one, explode two and explode three to create this explosion effect. So I'm going to go to looks and I'm going to bring in this switch costume two and I'm going to select explode one and then go to control and wait for a very, very small amount, like 0.01 seconds. So it's a hundredth of a second. Now I'm going to copy these two by right clicking on the purple block and then right clicking and duplicating these two switches. So I have four switches in total and then I'm going to right click and duplicate again. So I have eight costume switches in total. Now I want you to select the following. The first switch is explode one, then explode two, then three, then two, then one, and then explode three, explode two, and explode one. So the order is one, two, three, two, one, three, two, one. Now, if I click this script, look at this little bullet sprite that is visible here on the screen, this little dot. Bang, bang. This creates this explosion effect. 
And this is the script that I'm going to use. Now, we can obviously take this entire script and put it over here, which generates this huge script. Or I can teach you a little trick. I'm going to bring this away into the open space. And I'm going to define a custom block. So I'm going to go to this red section called my blocks and I'm going to click on this make a block and I'm going to name this block explode. So what this does is it creates a custom block. I will click OK and I will need to define explode. So notice this starter script as and I'm going to snap it here on top of the explosion effect. So what I've done here is I've created this little block that I called explode and I can use it in the code so I can bring it into my scripts and wherever this explode block happens, the actual implementation of it, which is the exploding effect will be executed. So I can simply bring this little red block explode inside and when it gets executed, this whole explosion effect will actually get run. So I hope that makes sense. I can simply bring in this red block over here, explode. And I can also show you how it works. If I bring this into the open space and I just click it, notice it has the same effect as the exploding script. And when I click it, notice it actually lights up. All right, so let me bring this back. So I'm going to say explode. And after explosion, I'm going to delete this clone. So go to control and bring in the regular delete this clone. So let's test it out. Let me hit the flag and let me start the game. So hit and notice that the clone is being generated, but it doesn't actually move towards the player. That is because I haven't actually started the marching script. So I haven't actually made the bullet move towards the player. So after we point in the direction player direction in the forever loop, the first thing we need to do is to move, let's say 10 steps towards the player. Let me hit the flag again. So let's see. And as you can see, the bullets always know the right direction where they should shoot. All right, this is awesome. If they hit me, they have this exploding effect. This is awesome. This looks great. We need to add a couple of things because we aren't taking into account the condition for the monster being under respawn. So notice what's happening if I kill the monster. So if I kill the monster, it's invincible, but it still throws bullets at me, but that's unfair. We need to fix that. So I'm going to add a little script such that when I receive monster respawn, right, I need to stop the scripts from running. So I need to stop the clones from being created. And I also need to delete this clone if the one who's running the script is a clone. So I'm going to go to control and I'm going to delete this clone. And I'm also going to stop other scripts in the sprite. And I'm going to put it right before that. So now when I hit the flag and when I hit play, the monster shoots bullets at me, but if I kill it, it's invincible, but it doesn't throw bullets at me anymore. But the problem is it doesn't throw bullets at me anymore, even at the next level, although it should. So let's fix that. Fortunately, that's pretty easy. We need to create a similar script with when I receive level two and in a forever loop, we'll wait a small amount and then create more clones. So let me reorder some of the stuff around this sprite. All right. So I'm just going to right click on the when I receive level one, and I'm going to duplicate it so that when I receive level two, the same forever loop, I'm going to wait a smaller amount like 0 0.8 seconds. And then I'm going to create clone of myself and I'm going to create similar sprites for level three, four and five. But again, for those of you who hate copying and pasting, I have a smarter solution for you. And that is a custom block. So I'm going to go to the red my block section again, and I'm going to make a new block. And I'm going to define this new block as 
shoot every and I'm going to add a parameter. So I'm going to click on this, add an input. So shoot every X and I'm going to add a label, seconds. So this block will say shoot every X seconds. Now X will be a parameter that we will use to delay these bullets like 0.8 seconds, one seconds and so on and so forth. So I'm going to click OK. Now, the way that I'm going to define this block is by this forever loop. So I'm going to take this forever loop and snap it here. So when I say shoot every X seconds, I'm actually saying start a forever loop and wait a number of seconds, whatever the value of X is, not 0.8, but whatever X is. So I'm going to drag X from the shoot every X seconds and I'm going to snap it inside. So whoever uses this block, like shoot every two seconds, will actually be saying forever wait two seconds because the value of X is two and create a clone of myself. So I hope that makes sense. I'm going to put this definition aside and I'm going to drag the newly created shoot every X seconds. And for level two, I'm going to use 0.8 seconds and I'm going to delete this forever loop and I'm going to bring in this red shoot every one seconds, which does exactly the same thing as before. So now it's much clearer what the code is supposed to do while saving some scripts duplicated, all right? So I'm going to make some room for the other scripts for level three, four, and five. So I'm going to right click and duplicate this and I'm going to say when I receive level three, and I'm going to shoot every 0.7 seconds. Then I'm going to duplicate it again. Say, I missed it. So when I receive level four, I'm going to shoot every 0.6 seconds and uh, duplicate and shoot at 0.5 seconds. And at this point, the bullet sprite is almost entirely programmed. We also need to do a very similar thing with the bomb sprite. But we've done quite a lot of work already, so let's continue that in the next video.